Chad, there's one more thing what I do is I do usually a pre-ride inspection. And while doing this pre-ride inspection, I'll go into cleaning clutches and stuff. And the first thing what I do is I always turn the kill switch off and I pull the tether cord off also. That's a pretty good reflex, Ken. You should always do those two steps before playing in your CVT compartment. Well, yeah, especially if you're playing with the clutches, you could probably, with this E-Tech, how it starts and everything, you probably start the machine and lose a couple of fingers. And you don't want that to happen. No, I think that kind of hurt. Okay, so let's begin by removing the panel. So one of the things we added this year, Kent, is the decalc on the CVT cover. You're talking about this decal. Exactly. And what it does, it's going to help the customer to remember how to adjust the clicker uh, when you need to do an adjustment on the P drive. Well, actually, Chad, that's a really good reminder to have, that's for sure. Now we have the tool, and this tool here will do the adjustment on the clickers, correct? Exactly. Not just, we'll see, change your belt, but it'll change the, the ride height of the belt and the clicker positions. Exactly, it's a multi-purpose tool uh, that we can use uh, to do all the basic maintenance on the vehicle. I'll remove the clutch cover now. And once I'm in the engine compartment, I'll remove the belt. And at the same time, while I'm removing the belt, I'll do a visual and I'll look at my oil jug, make sure it's full of oil. I'll make sure there's no leakage as I mean in leakage, when you're over pouring or you're spilling it around, it could get onto the belts and it could get onto the clutches. Exactly. And what happens, it'll glaze the belt and it'll come into a pre premature failure. Now that the belt's removed, what I do is I'll visualize and I'll see if there's any cracks, I'll see if it's glazed. So on the sides here, I'll take a look if there's top peeling and I'll look at over this way here. I won't bend it too far because I don't want to crack it because it's made to go in one direction. Exactly, and one other thing that you can take a look at is just to make sure that there's no core damage uh, on the side of the belt uh, before, you, before you go right. Now, what I'll do also is once I get into the CVT, I'll take a look and you know, just verify if everything's nice and tight. I'll grab the, sec or the primary clutch and I'll move it up and down. And by moving the clutch up and down, it'll tell me if there's a broken motor mount in the engine compartment. If everything's good in there, I'll take a look at the body panels, you know, because sometimes you could hit something or come in contact with something and not even realize. So if you start having belt slippage or blowing belts or whatever, one good thing to do is to verify for broken body panels, right? Exactly, and uh, that's a good thing. Uh, also, you don't want to have belt slippage in your CVT system. As we discussed earlier, that's gonna go to premature belt wear. We don't Biggest enemy is snow intrusion and oil on the clutches. Another thing too, what I've noticed over the years is how to clean your clutches. There's some product that's out there that will leave an oily residue on your clutches. And that will beat the purpose of having clean clutches. So as soon as you start spraying it with that cleaner with an oily residue, the belt will start to glaze right away. When I go out and I try to purchase something um, like BRP clutch cleaner, it'll remove all the oil residue on the clutch. Also, what I do, correct me if I'm wrong, is I'll take it and I'll spray a little bit on a rag and I'll clean my, my belt also. And this will remove some of the oil contaminants on the belt. Exactly, and that's one of the things that it's important to have the right product because if you put a product that's going to add oil on your component, uh, you're just going to affect performance of the CVT system. Make sure that you have the proper cleaner uh, when you do your cleaning of the pulley. Yeah, because if you're going to use it, like, you know, the price of a belt, compared to a good cleaner, could make a huge difference. And especially if you're doing a backcountry riding or whatever and leaving you stranded. Exactly. And I just spray, and I'm careful that I don't get it on any body panels. So for the video, I just did it in front here, nice and easy. I'll take a little bit of Scotch-Brite and I'll scuff up the clutch sheaves. Then I'll take the cleaner and I'll just rub the cleaner to take off all of the residue that's on the clutch faces. And what you're doing right now on the drive pulley should also be done on the driven pulley. Sometimes it's easy to see uh, that uh, the, pulley, the drive pulley needs to be cleaned. 
but the driven pulleys sometimes is a little harder to see. Always make sure to do both pulleys when you do this cleaning. You can see pretty much a lot of the belt dust that's on there. I'll spray a little bit more on my rag and I'll clean the driven. And you know, it's okay to, to scrub it. As you can see, there's still quite a bit of uh, gunk on there. So now, you know, like I said prior, I'm just gonna clean a little, the belt a little so it takes off all the oily residue that's on there. And then what I'll do is I'll reinstall the belt and I'll make sure that the arrows are pointing forward, right? Exactly. Why do we have arrows on the belt? The thing is when we start using the belt, we always want to use that belt in the same direction. Because we stimulate the belt in that particular orientation, having it on the other way could uh, lead to premature wear. So we really want to keep the belt moving always in the same direction. Now, with a new belt, is there a break-in procedure that we need to uh, be aware of? Yes, Ken. In the first 50 kilometers, you should try and limit the hard acceleration just to give a break-in to the belt. And another thing is when you add a new belt, or even after a while when you have the same belt, you should look at a belt height adjustment in the driven pulley. So to do that, you need to take the uh, suspension adjusting tool and then I can show you how it's done uh, on the vehicle. Oh, perfect. It'd be great if you can show that. So the first step, Ken, would be to loosen the, the clamping bolt that we have on top right here. After that, we get uh, the adjuster hub that becomes loose. There's a cord in the belt. We need to see barely the cord popping out of the driven. What we want to do in that case is we would like to pull the belt a little higher in the driven pulley. What we need to do, Kent, is to turn the adjuster hub clockwise. You see, that's gonna bring a little loose. That's because the sliding sheath needs to come back to the fixed sheath. What we'll do is we'll just try to push the belt back into position to get that uh, loose back from the adjuster hub. So you're just, you're just pinching the belt a little bit more so it raises up. Some. Exactly. So now that we can barely see the cord popping out of the driven pulley, we can reclamp the, uh, the bolt to make sure that everything's in place. Now, Chad, what happens if we don't have this adjustment done properly? What happens if the belt's too low or too high in the, in the secondary clutch? One of the main thing is that you won't get proper belt tension. Uh, if the belt is too low in the driven pulley, you'll have a lot of loose in your belt. If the belt is way too high, the tension, the initial tension will be too high, which, which could lead to creeping of the vehicle at idle position. If it's, we'll say the belt's too tight, it'll end up bogging the machine down, right? So you won't have the perfect performance off idle. Exactly, and that's why we need to have that perfect tension in the belt and by adjusting the cord right next to the driven pulley uh, sheave, uh, that should give you the performance that you need with your vehicle. Now, you know, my clutches are clean, my belt height is done. Um, is there, should I look at the belt adjustment after a few kilometers? Like I said previously, after a couple of rides, it's always good to check your, uh, your belt adjustment. You might just take a look at it and see that it's okay. And if you see that it's too low, just try and pull back up the belt in the driven like I did seconds ago. It's just preventative maintenance, so you're not stuck out in a bush by yourself. Exactly, and we always want to have the best performance sled possible, so those are little things that we can do on our sled. Thanks for the tips, Chad. I'm gonna finish my pre-ride inspection. Right on, Ken. I'll go do my sled and join you after. Well, that's the end of the uh, five-part explanation on the CVT system. I'd like to give special thanks to Chad for taking time out of his busy schedule to discuss and explain the system. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Ken, for having me. I hope those tips will help Skidoo riders to enjoy their sled even more.